Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Whales and Tales. In the last video we have covered climate change and in this video we are going to continue climate change but in this video we are mainly going to cover responses to climate change and the first response to climate change is mainly climate change mitigation. So let's uh, let's start with this topic and though I want to make these videos in my own languages, all Indian language but uh, I am quite sure the target audience is is aware of English also but if, if any one of you is want, any one of you wants me to make this video in Hindi or in Punjabi then I would love to do that I would love to make that part that video I have that separate series but for now I will continue with English so climate change mitigation climate change mitigation is a human intervention that involves reducing the sources of ghg emission what is ghg ghg is greenhouse gases for example the burning of fossil fuel reducing the burning of fossil fuel reducing the wood for electricity reducing heat or transport using the wood for electricity heat transport and simultaneously enhancing the sinks that store these gases such as forest ocean soil in an attempt to slow down the process of climate change the goal of mitigation is to avoid dangerous interference with the climate system is to stabilize ghg level in a time frame sufficient sufficient to allow ecosystems to adapt to adapt naturally to climate change third is the goal of mitigation is to ensure food production is not threatened the goal of mitigation is to enable economic development to proceed in a sustainable manner. The goal of, of this mitigation is to ensure sustainable economic development. While discussion of climate change policy usually call for adaptation to the warming that is irreversible, the overarching farming is usually that of mitigation that is trying to prevent what is not inevitable. The main aim of the International Paris Agreement on Climate Change, for example, is to hold the increase of global average temperature to a well below 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial level and pursuing efforts to limit the temperature increase to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial level by the end of century. Example of mitigation strategy include greater adoption. In example of mitigation strategies include greater adoption and policies to promote sustainability across different areas such as the following. So again this whole discussion of climate change policy usually call for adaptation to the warming that is irreversible and the overarching framing is usually that of mitigation and we all know that private this paris agreement they when where they where the target is to ensure that average temperature should be below 2.5 degrees celsius and we should pursue efforts to limit the temperature increase to 1.5 degrees celsius maximum which is uh, even above pre-industrial level by the end of the century. Example of mitigation strategy. So what are the example of mitigation strategy? First is energy. Deploying renewable energy sources such as wind, solar, geothermal, hydro, some biofuels that are shown to be low carbon and produce, produce sustainably. Unfortunately, not all biofuels are better than petroleum alternatives when life cycle emissions including nitrous oxide from fertilizers, crops and other production emissions are considered burning wood. To generate electricity or commercial scale heat releases more CO2 at the time of combustion and focus accumulation of carbon. Had the trees been allowed to continue growing? <laughs> so there are two problems. First is increase of CO2 and second is the absorption of CO2. So if we are using wood for um, if we are using wood for for producing electricity. So there it is neither we are doing we are increasing also and we are uh, removing or, or we are reducing the carbon sink sources buildings retrofitting buildings to become more energy efficient and using building material and equipment that reduce buildings carbon footprint using uh, retrofitting buildings transport adopting more sustainable low carbon transportation and infrastructure such as electric vehicles rail metro bus rapid trans transit particularly in cities but also decarbonizing shipping road and air transport land use and forestry improving forest management reducing deforestation growing more of our existing forest to achieve their potential for, for potential for 
biodiversity and carbon accumulation a management process known as proforestation so improving forest management reducing deforestation growing more of existing forest agriculture improving crop rotation grazing land management to increase soil carbon storage carbon pricing and the other economic measures implementing carbon reduction policies and penalizing heavy emitters that promote ghg emission reduction in the form of either a carbon tax or cap and trade mechanism and uh, direct payment for carbon accumulation by forest and soil one more strategy for carbon mitigation is for climate mitigation for climate change mitigation is industry and manufacturing developing more energy efficient processes and less carbon intensive products reducing more process emissions from cement and steel making um, and other greenhouse gases including methane leaks from the fossil fuel industry and agriculture and developing equipment and processes to facilitate carbon capture energy storage battery pump system recycling efficiency and so on industry material and manufacturing present particularly challenges although the industrialization or the reduction of the consumption could in theory have mitigation efforts consider the significant drop in ghg emissions and in economic output accompanying accompanying, accompanying the covid-19 pandemic due consideration must also be given to the associated negative societal impact example recession and unemployment and alternatively achieving green industrialization at scale including decommissioning and retrofitting of existing facilities may unless addressed through improved resource efficiency and circular design by be a reforestation material intensive process the ipcc has noted the relatively uneven state of play with regard to technological innovation in several rele- relevant areas so friends uh, uh, this car- chemical uh, the <laughs> what chemical this here let's touch this thing industry material manufacturing presents particular challenges which kind of challenges although in deindustrialization or a reduction in consumption in theory have mitigation effects for example significant drop in ghg emissions and economic output accompanying the covid-19 pandemic but due consideration must also be given to the associated negative social societal impacts such as recession and unemployment this so esg also esg also cover this recession and in, in employment unemployment thing so that's the best thing about esg it's not considered only environment it's considered social social implication and governance areas also alternatively and um, in this video it's this this chapter third is dedicated only to e but next chapter is dedicated to s and then next chapter is dedicated to g and by covering this e s g three chapter plus we have already covered two chapter this five chapter we are going to do then we will start uh, doing practice more practice of this five chapter to have more strong hold then we we'll cover about six seven eight nine chapter then the remaining four chapters okay let's focus here alternatively achieving in the green industrialization at scale including decommissioning and retrofitting of existing facilities may unless addressed through improved resource efficiency and circular design be a reforestation material intensive process the ipcc has noted the relatively uneven state of play and with regard to technological innovations in several relevant areas for almost all basic materials primary metals building materials and chemical many low to zero ghg intensity production process are at the pilot to near commercial and in some cases commercial stage but not yet established industrial practice introducing new sustainable basic material production process could increase production cost but given the small fraction of consumer cost based on the material are expected to translate into minimal cost increases for final consumer hydrogen direct reduction for primarily steel making is near commercial in some region until new chemistry chemistries are mastered deep reduction of cement process emissions will rely on already commercialized cement material substitution and the availability of carbon capture and storage reducing emissions from the production and use of chemical would need to rely on a life cycle approach including increased plastic recycling fuel feedstock reswitching and carbon source through biogenic sources and depending on the availability carbon capture and utilization direct air co2 capture and as well as carbon capture and storage light industry mining and manufacturing have the potential to be decarbonized through available deep abatement technologies example material efficiency circularity electrification e electrothermal heating heat pumps and low to high low to zero e g h g emitting fuels high high hydrogen ammonia bio phase and other synthetic fuels so they are just sharing 
different different processes which 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 can reduce emissions to from the production use of the chemicals from a life cycle approach so these are just they share in those examples let's have some example more real life example which they are calling here case studies the race to net zero stabilizing global average temperature rise at any level depends on achieving a stable balance between gig sources going into and out of atmosphere though that is reaching net zero emission the earlier this point is reached the less warming the world is likely to experience the current net zero gig emission strategy endorsed by many governments and ceos is it intended to meet the paris agreement goal of keeping temperature from rising more than 5 1.5 degrees celsius the world's foremost assembly of climate scientists the ipcc found that the two in three say chances of limiting global average temperature rises to 1.5 degrees celsius requiring reducing emission 45 degree, 45% below 2005 levels by 2030 net zero co2 emissions around 2050 and continued net negative emissions until beyond 2100 coupled with deep reduction in emission of other i would not be living by 2100 even by 2050 i have no idea i mean if i'm at at 2050 i won't give a i won't i won't care about what is going on i'm too old and i would be care about my breathe and body and whether i'm living i'm not sure i whether i would be living in 2050 also if you're watching this video and and it's 2050 <laughs> do send a do send a message on comment box and let's see whether i can respond it or not Uh, net zero targets are increasingly be, uh, being adopted by governments the example those of the united kingdom and eu china japan canada south africa south korea at states that and territories example nevada U- us victoria queensland in australia companies amazon acrel metal bt group bp ikea quanta sony walmart so all these net, net zero targets are increasingly being adopted by the governments and as well as companies As of April 2022, 88% of global emission of greenhouse gases, 90% of GDP, and 85% of world population were in jurisdiction covered by net zero target. So most of the, uh, so if this is Earth, so most part of the Earth is uh, targeting this 2050 target of net zero. The, the, this 2050 targets, this 2050 target have also been adopted by many corporations. Model net zero pathway can therefore, therefore differ significantly. in their emissions profile um, with the role of interim targets 2025 2030 and the assumed reliance on carbon capture or offsets example in emissions intensive companies net zero uh, commit, commitments com- coming under increased scrutiny many offsets simply are transfer credit for emissions reduction and do not change the amount of co2 in the atmosphere the higher the ambition of mitigation policies and the Higher the required upfront investment, the IPCC has estimated that in the energy sector alone, between US one trillion and US four trillion of additional annual investment in energy supply, and around US one trillion in energy demand will be will be will be needed to be twenty fifty to limit warming to one point five degrees Celsius. However, IPCC has further noticed that how these investment needs compare to with those in the policy baseline scenario in certain. In other words, even scenarios without climate mitigation requires investment. For example, in oil and gas extraction. and transportation or in the coal or gas power plants it's unclear how this cost may evolve alongside temperature for example around half of the oil and gas fields in russian arctic are estimated to be the areas where melting permafrost can cause severe damage to infrastructure such as pipelines and shipping terminals in may 2020 such melting under a diesel storage tank caused the largest environmental accident in the russian arctic region given that the world is already investing approximately us 1 trillion early in the energy sector the important question is what kind of energy system is being financed for new and expired capital replacement what is the extent to which in today's investment risk locking in future emissions and looking broadly across sectors ipcc has highlighted many mitigation option exist today and many of which have lower economic cost compared to the alternatives what are those let's see exhibit 6 so they are suggesting these these they are saying solar energy very important wind energy and then the this reduce reduced conversion of forest and ecosystems and then carbon sequential in agriculture then we have afforestation reforestation economic resortation so these are certain good suggestion fuel switching so if you want to have a idea let's see what are those mitigation option wind energy solar energy use biofuel electricity hydropower geothermal nuclear energy carbon capture and storage bioelectricity with cch reduce ch4 emissions and from coal mining if i'm not wrong ch4 may be methane ch4 emissions from oil and gas carbon sequential in agriculture ch4 then and to nitrogen oxide emission in agriculture reduce conversion of forest and other ecosystems ecosystem restoration and reforestation and reforestation improve sustainable forest management reduce food loss and food waste shift to balanced and sustainable healthy diets 
avoid demand for energy services being efficient lightning appliances and equipments new building with high energy performances on site renewable production and use the improvement of existing building stock and enhance use of food product fuel efficient light duty vehicle electric light duty vehicles shift to public transportation shift to bikes and e bikes fuel efficient highly high heavy duty vehicles electric heavy duty vehicles i including buses shipping efficiency and optimization optimization aviation energy efficiency biofuels energy efficiency material efficiency enhanced recycling fuel switching feedstock carbon capture cementitious reduction of non co2 emissions reduce emissions of fluoride gases reduce ch4 emissions reduce ch4 emission from waste water and from solid water these are some suggestion or uh, strategies need to be followed to work climate mitigation however despite the availability of so many options the rate of deployment set against the backdrop of current rate of emissions and the insignificant insufficient strength of the policies for uh, as so far announced by the governments worldwide may render certain mitigation goals increasingly unachievable okay this may be unachievable to illustrate the scale of the challenge in 2020 the covid-19 pandemic led to the largest recorded drop in yearly co2 emissions approximately 7% It is estimated that similar reduction would be needed each year until 2030 to meet 1.5 degrees Celsius. <laughs> Despite a suite of policies introduced, a faster to have to faster the green recovery after the pandemic set the falling box. Green recovery, the UN has noted, and given the global reduction in emissions opportunities to reuse pandemic recovery spending to reduce emissions has been largely largely missed. So that's it by this we will cover we have already covered our climate mitigation and next video will cover climate adapt climate adaptation but let's do the end of this another example the green recovery what is green recovery the roadshow of policies the majors announced by the governments in the aftermath of the covid-19 pandemic has created an opportunity to promote sustainability objectives alongside electronic economic development a survey of economic economists has highlighted several policies areas perceived to a high multiplier effect on the economy activity and high potential to decrease gig emissions investment in clean physical infrastructure and innovation or retrofits to improve energy efficiency natural capital investment clean energy research and development and an investment in education and training the reality of on the ground that has been mixed with capital and policy support continuing to flow to both green and brown sectors for example a review of country level measures in eu found that less than third of the total 700 billion in, is analyzed in analyzed recovery plans is assessed as likely to have a positive or very positive climate contribution at the global level the international energy efficiency agency estimated that at the end of the october 2021 us 470 billion have been earmarked by government to su- support clean energy again we have exhibit 7 where we will cover significant gap still remains between the short term policy commitment of governments known as nationally nationally determined contribution to our ndc national determined contribution and the magnitude of emissions cuts needed so what it, it is global ghg emission under different scenarios and emissions gap current policy scenario Believe to two point eight 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 eight. Unconditional and this and plus scenario. Unconditional and this and plus scenario with net zero target. And one point five degrees Celsius range. So, they are saying the scenarios. Where we are. Where we want. Where we want. so this 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 thing should be keep in mind here to, if we follow 2010 policy scenario current policy scenario unconditional policy scenario but with certain conditional forms then remaining gap bit is to stay in 2 degrees celsius then this scenario where we want to achieve so there are little more areas to do we need to adopt to the more path phase to more strategies like they just here are explaining here when like in covid-19 pandemic there was if we want to achieve the target until to 2030 to meet this 1.5 degree celsius then in that case we need to have these kinds of drops each year the drop which had which happened because of covid-19 pandemic shutdown okay with this with this um, worrying note let's end the video and in next video we'll cover climate change adaptation hope you like this video and if you have any suggestion feel free to drop a message in comment box take care bye bye